Alright, hi everybody and welcome back to the Guitar Bay. I'm Takis. I'm Danny. What are we drinking today, mate? Mate, today we're drinking Pils. And uh, what a Pils that is, yeah? Well, it's a one. beast. It's a Christmas, New Year's uh, special. First take. So, Happy New Year to everyone. Happy this is New the first Year. episode we're doing in 2022. It was a difficult year for everyone, I suppose. Us included. <sighs> But we're here, we're healthy, and yes. we're, we're first same. drink since Hogmanay, since the... Uh, the last day of Hogmanay was yesterday. Today's the 2nd of January that we're filming. No idea when this is actually going to be up and ready. I won't go for a full glass. No? So yeah, this is Pils. It's, it's a great beer. It's I a drink Pilsner. It it's a Pilsner Urquell yeah. from, from the Czech Republic. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Cheers to 2022. Everyone. Happy New Year. All the best. Ah, oh, lovely and cold as it should be. Yeah. Okay. But today's a Back to Basics episode. I've got Correct. a piece of gear that I've had for a while that I'm looking to potentially add to the bay or get rid of. Um, let's see. I haven't tried it yet. Okay. I, you told me what it is. I know it's yes. an amp. I know it's a head. Mm-hmm. So we can use it with the Laney, uh, with the speaker of the of my of my Laney TF400, which is an HH uh, British-made speaker, 12-inch. Very good. We did the same with uh, with the Marshall yeah. Origin, the five-watt uh, combo, and it made a huge difference. Um, and I know that you have a an amp, a head. Yeah, I paid 100 euros for it. I got it from my local. There's some guy that's often selling used gear on Is that the uh, guy eBay. you got the, um, the Epiphone from? Yes. Yeah, same guy. So I went around and picked it up. Quick deal. 100 euros. What could it be? It's 20 watts. Small. Head. It's a head. I say it's either Harley Bender or a Bugera. One of the two. It's neither. It's neither? No. Uh, you've paid 100 euros for Valve? Well. 20 watts. Oh my. It's the Mini Terror, isn't it? You can unveil it. I'll grab your beer. I, I, I saw the orange bit. Yeah. So it's the Mini Terror. What's it called? The Micro. Micro Terror. It's in pretty much brand oh new my. condition. And that's 20 watts. It's 20 watts. It's got a valve preamp. So I think it's similar to your Laney in the fact okay. that it's got a solid state output. It's got FET. I think you know what that means. Yeah. But it's similar to the, some of the transistor pedals. Correct. In the power output section. They're 20 watts. They don't need a load, actually. Um, I mean, that's brilliant. So this is the Mini Terror. It's 20 watts. It's got one valve, one preamp valve that I can see. I think it's a 12 AX7. And the power amp section is, is FET. No. FET yeah. based, FET transistors. And it's got volume, tone, gain. So it's got a master volume. I'm really excited, and honestly. I've heard some amazing demos of these. I've heard some bad demos as well. And your, your Laney is all right, but it has that compressed solid state feel to yeah. it. Even with it's also got a preamp uh, tube. It has two actually, yeah. Because it's 100 watts, 120 actually. So uh, it needs two. I don't know if it needs two, but it has two for, the, for this hybrid feeling of uh, you know, preamp um, valve an output transistor or solid state. Yeah, okay. That's not, much, not much to it, right? No, but that's very interesting. And there's not much we, you, know, you just plug it in, dial it a good sound and see if it works. Yeah. So let's see if it works. Right, so we're back, uh, we filled up our beers and we're plugging in the Orange Micro Terror. We literally have not done any levels, nothing. So this is really gonna be the first time we've heard it. That's the thing, you've never heard it so far. Never. You haven't plugged uh, it's it into in anything at home, you just had it in the box, haven't That's used it. it. So this is the first time, we have no idea what it's gonna sound like. And it's, as you can see, uh, on my Laney TF400, um, and there's a 57 in front of the cabinet. And there's also a stereo mic in the room, of course, uh, to blend in some, some room sound. And you turn it on, and I can we hear some sound. noise. Okay, there's no uh, pedals. Uh, on right now. Uh, what you heard earlier, by the way, in the jam was uh, me playing the 339 with this pedal board and uh, Danny was playing the telly with this pedal board. 
um, just for reference. But now let's hear the orange baby terror, mini terror, micro terror, micro terror. <laughs> In terms of um, how much headroom have we're we got? pretty much at noon so There's no reverb on the amp. Uh, it's a 12 inch speaker. <laughs> So we only have three knobs. Can to you please lower the gain and give me more volume? See how okay. how loud it can go and stay clean, clean-ish. That's full. This that's, is full volume. That's a punch. It seems the knob almost didn't stop going when I was turning it up. Usually you feel like it goes to 10 and it stops. It carried on going round. Okay. But it's not overly loud, right? No. It's a bit more, it's about sort of 75%. two o'clock, yeah. Okay, it's shrill already. Turn the gain up. Mm -hmm. getting at the our limits it's quite noisy I'll bring down the volume yeah. slight and then <laughs> Thank you. 
not so like this is fun. <laughs> Gain all the way up. That's sort of almost at three o'clock, so let's go. You can hear it. Bring the volume down a tad. You can hear the, wow. the crackling, like, like someone frying many eggs behind me, but it never got flubby, muddy, you know. Still got that little bit of compression Not that too I think. sound. There's no pedal on apart from a memory man now. Is this a sweet say, spot for I'll you? Say. Rolled off the volume a bit. Is it better than your Laney? What do you think? The Laney, I mean, I can hear the telly quite well. Yeah. The Laney is less noisy, which makes sense. Um, has more low end if I want to. Mm -hmm. and has Actually, more a lot, a lot more low end to the Laney, which I don't like. You, well, you can, you can. I mean, you can dial it out. Mm -hmm. um, this is what you get with this guy here, which is not bad at all. And I guess it wouldn't be able to take pedals that well in terms of not in terms of tone in terms of headroom so let's see what happens when i do this royal blue overdrive But it doesn't compress too much. It goes a bit shrillish. Yeah. But it doesn't. So that's that's neck pickup. It should be a bit warmer. It's a bit shrill, and I think it's a it's a headroom issue. Right, so I've got my Les Paul now going through. I've got reverb running from my baby boom. Let's see. It's done. It's a noisy ass amp, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's not. Yeah, you, you would expect that, I guess. And that's now we have a hotter guitar with the with the humbucker. So I'm gonna go gain nine o'clock to go to see a clean, mm -hmm. to find a clean-ish yep. sound, as clean as you can be with a Les Paul, of course. And uh, yeah, give me some, give me some love.
final. De novo. <risos> Try your um, your King of Clones yes. uh, Ly pedals, L Y pedals, just to see how it takes that one, which is quite similar to the Royal Blue. It is. I mean, it's a blues breaker style, yeah. Timmy blues breaker, King of Clone, King of Tones, or the original one. <laughs> Sounds like a Marshall. Shit. <laughs> because, yeah, shit yeah. as in good. Yeah? Shit, as, as like in good. Yeah. It. I think with with when you play it now and you engage the pedal, uh, you heard more compression, more mid focus. Because I think the combination of the hot humbuckers mm. plus pedal plus this amp at the edge of falling apart, uh, you hear compression. Things become more honky, but pleasant. And in a mix, this is awesome. This yeah. is, you take that with you. It's mental, isn't it? You know, uh, in the uh, rehearsal room, where hopefully there's a cab, like a 12 inch cab, and that's it. That's brilliant. I think with the, I'm comparing it to the Marshall slightly, but the Marshall was more, for me, was more like really felt it, you know, deep in your, in your body. You could feel the, the valve and the stuff. And this, you really had to dial it in there to get that sweet spot. And that's it. I mean, you find this one spot and, uh, I mean, you can't ask more. How much do they go new? Those? I think 140 or something. 140? Yeah, and I got it for 100 used, but literally perfect condition. You see, it's like brand new. The question is, do we, we want a second amp? Yeah, Is this true. it? Good question. 
I, I think for practical reasons, I would say no, uh, because I would like something bigger headroom. In terms of tone, though, this, I would say this blows my Laney out of the water, which is, of course, new technology. I got the Laney when I was 18, so 18 years ago. Um, and solid state amps have come a long way since then. Mm. Uh, and I mean, digital technology, of course, too, and all the, you know, the katanas and all the, uh, all the simulators. That's, that's awesome. That's a new product, right? When did it come out? Like that's, last year? No, or? good five years. Okay. Well, good, they've been out for a good while, but okay. it was the first of its lunchbox size amps. Uh, you know, okay. th there's been many since then, and it's pretty huge for, for the that size of it. That was really pleasant. The, the sweet spot edge of breakup, mm. both with the Les Paul and with the Telecaster. Again, as, as with the Marshall, a bit more leeway with a single coil guitar, you mm -hmm. know, because you have more, you, less output, more air to play. You can engage a pedal or two maybe. Uh, if you have a Les Paul in this, that's it. You find your tone, you play darkness all night. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Shall we have a jam or something? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Keep it there. That was fun and spontaneous. And yeah, you played the um, orange as it was uh, with the Les Paul. I played the uh, telly in the uh, LC50, uh, Laney. Yeah, just I literally just had reverb on there. I was you've definitely dialed the sweet spot there on the orange. It's Sounds dynamic. Great. It's nice and dynamic. Cleans up well. Uh, that was uh, surprisingly good. I wasn't expecting this tiny pocket thing to uh, to yield such sounds. I know. 100 euro, you said? 100 bucks. And I think that's a standard price to pick them up for on the used market. Um, let's keep it, or we keep keeping everything, it's the problem. Provided you have a, provided you have a cab already. I mean, it, takes, it has a headphones uh, output in the front, but uh, I would say provided you, ha you have a cab already, this is a fantastic practice amp. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't, need, it doesn't need a speaker output either, as in a, a load box. Um, you can turn it on without a load. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Okay, let's wrap this up. What was your album with P? Uh, I'm going to go back to King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. And this is one of my favorite albums of all time. It's a relatively new album. It's the fourth out of the five albums they released in 2017. It's called Polygondwana Land. And the amazing thing is that they decided to gift this record to the public. They said, that's the, down that's the download link. Go and download it from Bandcamp for free. You own this album. There's no copyright on it. And I think it's their masterpiece. It's their, their finest work. It's, so, it's, it's crazy. It's polyrhythmic. It's, uh, it drifts beautifully from song one to, uh, to the end, uh, as most King Gizzard albums do. But the amount of work they've put in, into this album is just crazy. 
Does that mean uh, they produced it themselves and everything? I mean, that's the case, generally speaking, with them. That's what they always do. Mm. But this album is... Um, because it's a garage... It, it, they, I mean, the band is all over the place. It's one of the few bands who uh, can play every genre and uh, uh, literally you wouldn't be able to tell it's the same band from one album to the next. Uh, but you can say that they have a, a garagey, psychedelic garagey background. That's how they came together and most of their mm. early songs were like that. This one goes into a polyrhythmic rock like Tool meets King Crimson meets The Beatles. And, uh, and with, a, with a hint of Osric Tentacles, just for the psychedelic stuff. It's full of polyrhythmic, polymetric stuff. It's difficult. I think they, the amount of, of time and effort they put into making this album might exceed what they've done so far as a band. Uh, it's a masterpiece. And um, if you haven't checked it out, if there's one album out of all those you've um, heard me mention in the past few months, that's the one, Polygon Dwana Land, by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizards. Yeah, that's well, my album. My one's Permission to Land. Permission so to Land. Simple enough. I already hit the some darkness from the there. The darkness, of course. And I what found, a, what an album. yeah, I found a love for them again. You know, recently, and Justin Hawkins has just started doing YouTube, and he's doing an awesome job. Justin Hawkins, right again? Yeah, love him, love him. He's very, he's very wise to the industry, to music itself. Um, I think very, he's been through very it modest. all. He's yeah. a very modest, very. Uh, you know, not pretentious kind of person at all. I think he's been through and probably been screwed over and everything. And, you know, they, they, it's a shame that they've been seen as a joke band at some point, but really, they're still going, they're still going super strong. And, uh, you know, 20 years in the industry, it's pure still, rock and roll. No, yeah. you know, no, great tone, no silly stuff, just two Les Pauls, two Marshalls, one, two, three, four, rock and roll with a heart and an amazing vocalist and charismatic um, guitar player, singer, crazy singer. Yeah, and to think he can still sing. You know, you look at Axl Rose, he can't sing anymore, can he? Like he did. Justin still hits all those notes. I bought Permission to Land when it came out. Uh, I sent my mum to buy it for me because I was homesick. And she said, I can go get you a CD from the CD store. Like 1998? Maybe? Yeah, I think it's... 99? Yeah, it's, I was 13 or 14. Mm. And I said, could you get me two? Because I knew that they had this, they had this nice price feature. At the end of the, uh, the rock and metal section, they had the nice price CDs. And I knew that the Rage Against the Machine records were also on nice price. So I told him to get me the first album by Rage Against the Machine, self-titled. You know, Bomb Track, Take the Power Back and all, mm. all that. Killing the name of And um, uh, Permission to Land, because I had uh, been enjoying... Uh, I believe in a thing called love and love is only a feeling mm. the two singles the two video clips from that um, a, a record on MTV and I said to my mom buy this too please and uh, the guy who owned the store complimented her son me for his music taste so she came back with a smile saying the guy said that you are you know have a really good taste in music because I said I was buying me for my son it's a it's an epic album and for me it was growing on me was the first song the song on Kerrang you know watching Kerrang at the time and that that video is ridiculous and such a great song that drop d riff at the start is so epic and you know they then went a bit more mainstream with i believe in a thing called love and just in your face wild band and yeah just awesome heavy rock amazing heavy rock reviving queen vibes and uh led zeppelin vibes mm. and yes heavy proper ballsy rock yeah nothing to say about that permission to land Brilliant. What's your favorite album beginning with the letter P? Would like to know. <laughs> <laughs> Pay watchers. Pay watchers. That would be the, the Patreon page in the future. The Pay, pay watchers. watchers. The guitar pay. <laughs> pay the pay. <laughs> so that was our uh, mini micro. Micro terror. Micro terror. Micro terror. Yeah. Impressed. I really liked it. Yeah, me too. Once we got it dialed in at first, I was a bit skeptical whether it was going to sound good or not, but... Uh... But it sounded banging towards the end once, once we got it done. Um, we're still on the search, though, for a second amp, so if there's any ideas. I've been trying not to buy a Hot Rod Deluxe because it's the easy option, even though I think I should have one for many reasons, um, to um, complement the Laney, or maybe a Vox would... The Laney's EL84s, so it should sound like a Marshall if, if power amps... If, if valves in the power section, in the power amp section, sort of determine the flavor 
Are they not 34s? Are no, no that, that would be a Vox. Am I wrong no. here? Yeah. Yeah, I, sure. I, I thought 34 is the Vox, 84 is the Marshall, and 606 is typically the Fender. No. I might, yeah, very likely I'm wrong. So ECC 83 and EL 34s. Yeah. Marshall. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You heard it. I think I'm, I'm definitely down. We should get a Marshall. I think we should get a Marshall. Yeah. After having the Origin 5. I love that. Thought it sounded yeah, epic. The point is that this has the same valves as a Marshall. Yeah. But it doesn't sound like a Marshall at all. It sounds mm -hmm. more like a Fender. Uh, or more like a Laney. Laney has yeah. its own sound, actually. Agreed. Yeah. So let's wrap this up. Thank you for watching again and for having watched and subscribing Cheers. and and commenting. Please do more of that. Take care. Have a lovely 2022, and we'll see you soon. Bye bye. bye.